All right, and welcome back to Crag Live. We have our featured guests for tonight on the line and waiting. We are very, very excited and honored to be joined by our next two guests. They are from the Europop sensation, Middle of the Road, and we are very excited to be talking to Sally Carr and Ken Andrew. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi, yeah. How are you? We are so excited because... The world was kind of rocked this week uh, over the announcement that another European group by the name of ABBA is coming back (laughs) after all this time. I want to remind people that before ABBA, there was a group called Middle of the Road that was Europop, and and you guys are still hanging in there and you're still around. you got a very active Facebook page, very loyal fans, and it's such a pleasure to talk to both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what's even greater is you guys have been in this band so long and you're good friends still. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we managed to do that. Why are you laughing? In one part of the country and I live in the other part. <laughs> yes, we are very good friends. We've <laughs> been friends for over 50 years. Wow, that's, that's a long time. So you're in different parts of Scotland, right? Where are you, Sally? I'm in the west of Scotland in a tiny little village called Lang. Bank. It's right beside the River Clyde. Wow. It's beautiful, but it can get very wet. Really? What about you, Ken? Well, I'm just about uh, 20 miles south of Edinburgh in a little village called Nine Mile Burn. Wow. And um, it's in the borders of Scotland, no, not near the sea, but mm-hmm. um, it's also very beautiful with lots of trees and plenty of places to walk. Wow. And I've lived here for the past, oh, what, four or five years. Well, in comparison of living in the desert out here in California, I envy you guys so much. It's such a beautiful country, and and of course, the first thing yes, I'd want to do. You often, and it must be dreadful with all those fires. Oh, all just all yeah. the time, all the time. It's terrible. But I must tell you, the first thing that I would want to do uh, once I got to Scotland, aside from seeing you guys, is I'd want to visit the the uh, Loch Ness monster. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, I've been looking for well, it for years. I've really? I've up there filming uh, for the, the Loch Ness area, uh-huh. and the only Loch Ness monster I saw was the reflection of the helicopter in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, Sally, you said you've been no, looking... No, it's his own reflection. <laughs> right, so... Do you, do you, funny, this this is kind of like off the cuff. I, I know, I don't think Ken does, but Sally, do you believe in a monster? Truthfully, I do. Yeah. I do too, because yes, I want I really to believe. I really do believe in it. I believe there is something there. I don't know what it is, but I do believe there is something there. Um, I don't know. Well, you know, we've, we've interviewed the Loch Ness Monster, and he's a middle-of-the-road fan. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to know. Yes, I think he thinks tweedle dee tweedle them quite often. There you go, there you go. You know, I wanted to find out, because one thing that was really interesting to me, and I'm asking you first, Ken, I, I guess you guys were not happy with the label that was pinned on you a- as being bubblegum. I know we've heard you call uh, called Euro Pop, but they've also said bubblegum that you guys were not too happy with songs like Chirpy Chirpy Cheap Cheap and, and songs that were kind of bubblegummy. Is that right? You've always had a problem with your image and what the uh, the label wanted you to uh, perform. Yes, that's that's true. Um, when we first heard the, the demo of Chirpy Cheap Cheap, uh-huh. uh, the three boys sort of cowered in the corner and said, you don't, you're not asking us to sing that, for goodness sake. Uh-huh. I mean, we're a, we're a musical group and we sing you know, songs that make sense. Yeah. And Sally said, no, I think it's really nice, it's really good, and it's catchy. So we agreed that we would def- we would sing it, um, but we had to be sort of um, given some alcoholic beverage to help us, <laughs> because uh, it was not the sort of song that we wanted to sing. We really, we had other ideas as to what we wanted to do, but we, we recorded it, and heavens, it just took off. Well, it appears that Sally had a better business sense than you did because she <laughs> she was right because it was it was such a big seller. I mean, how did you know, Sally, that this was going to be a big song for the band? I guess probably because I've never grown up myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I love fun. I really I I love fun. I 
I don't like being serious. Life is too short to yeah. be too serious. So you have to have fun. And it was it was a fun song. Mm -hmm. And I still love singing it. Still love it. Right. Right. Yes, but if I can just say you that Giacomo Chosi, who was our producer in, in Italy, he, he uh -huh. now lives in, I think, Los Angeles and, and has been living and working there for the past oh, 30 or 40 years. Yeah. And his idea was that we were to sing happy songs. And whether they were sensible or not didn't matter. It was to get people to feel happy. And that, the first time I realized that was when I spoke to him about two or three years ago on the phone. And um, he's quite right. The, the songs that we sang with RCA were particularly happy songs, and I think that's what helped. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you, behind every bubblegum song, there is some usually some good bones to the song. And I have to tell you that even though, Ken, you might have thought that it was silly kind of pop music, if you really break chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep down, especially the drum back bass to that song, it's got good structure. Yes, I think that's true, and that, that, that uh, the, the opening drum uh, intro, it took me about uh, 25 minutes to learn how to do it properly, because it was a particular um, accents that were, the, the, they sound simple, but actually they're not as simple as they sound, mm -hmm. and I had to sort of work on that for about 20 minutes before I could get it right, and in fact, when I did get it right, uh, and then we went into the bulk of the song, you'll notice maybe that the song speeds up a bit because obviously confidence was building. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I know I can speak for my daughter. That song has embedded itself in her brain. Yes. And you just can't get over that song. You hear it day and night, and it becomes like an earwig. It's a good earwig, but <laughs> it, it definitely is a song that you're, you're always tapping your feet to. You know, I, I wonder if you turn around and you think about it, knowing how they wanted you guys to sing happy songs, I think that was kind of inspired by Sally's voice because her her voice is very unique, and, and it, it, she sounds very yeah, happy all you. the time, huh? Thank you. No, it's yeah, it's true. It's, that's true Sally. It, it definitely fits her voice. That might have had a lot to do with it because, you know, she sounded different than a lot of other girl singers in the fact that it just sounded like some pretty young girl that was having a good time, and it really fit that song. It really did. Yep. And that's for sure. So, you know, my voice has been put down by so many people over mm -hmm. the years. Really? And because I'm not a trained singer. Uh -huh. um, oh, come on, Sally. That's not, I've been telling you for the past 50 years, <laughs> nearly 60 years, for goodness sake, that your song, your voice is very strong. It's a, you're a terrific singer. It is. If, if you're not so a trained singer. voice is terrible. If you're not a trained I'm singer, you can't tell. I'm not perfect. Let's yeah. put it that way. Well, let's put it this way. Oh, Coming yeah. from somebody that's just a listener, if you haven't had any training, I sure sure as, as heck couldn't tell. Because it, it is, it has a great range, and it's different. And that's what makes it different. You know, you hear all these singers, and they all sound alike. You had a different sound. It was never matched by anybody else, ever. But that's because I'm not a trained singer. Oh. I just sing from my heart. Well, for whatever reason, it worked, it worked and that's for sure. Worked. Am I right uh, for a while uh, that, uh, Sally, you did quit the group for a while, right? It was because of, uh, am I right in hearing, I'm reading my notes, because you the death of your mother, and uh, that was a very sorry, right. sad time for you, and you really couldn't sing the lyric, Where's Your Mother Gone, anymore, because it really bothered you. Is I that couldn't. It was just, uh, I just loved my mom so much. Mm. My mom lived with me till she died, oh. and I, I just, it took me such a long time to be able to sing Chirpy again because yeah. of that. Every time I, I sang the first line, I would cry, Yeah. and that's not the way it was meant to be. It was meant to be happy. What was it like, Ken, trying to find a replacement for Sally? Um, it was impossible, to be perfectly honest. Um, when Sally left, uh, the, it, 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 we, we did them try one or two girls of, of different voices, etc. But none of them ever got what Sally had. And I, I stuck with it for about a year after Sally left. But then when I realized that it really wasn't going to work, yeah. that it was far better to keep the past and, and not try to do something new for the future, um, then I left the band as well. Yeah. And the two of us 
kept in touch from time to time, but um, for about 15 years we, we didn't get involved with the band. And Ian and Eric, the, the two brothers, carried on as best they could. And they did do very well. I mean, they changed the sound of the band, but it was never ever going to have, as you quite rightly pointed out, right. the unique voice that Sally was able to project in right. the group. And um, that was never going to be repeated, I don't think. So uh, it just sort of fizzled out with us. But um, then something happened later. Right. Uh, well, it began again. Yeah, it began. I wanted to actually talk about that. Obviously, we'll go back and talk about the origin of the band. But let's go forward a little bit because you guys got back together. But I understand that that before all of that happened, and I don't think you'll mind talking about this, Sally. But you had you had some health issues, right? Yeah, I had a massive brain hemorrhage. Oh my. And the brain hemorrhage, I'm a very fit person, I'm a very healthy person, but the brain hemorrhage was caused by an accident when I was being delivered, Mm -hmm. an accident of birth. And it just lay dormant in my head for many years. Many, many people are walking about with the same problem, but it doesn't erupt. Mine erupted because I was running up my back stairs after putting my washing out in the dark and I tripped and my head bashed into the iron railing Mm. and that caused it to move and start to grow and that's what caused the brain hemorrhage. So my head has been opened up from side to side to remove the mass. Wow. And I guess after the brain hemorrhage, you had a stroke, or was that all one event? Was it two different events? No, it was a year after the brain hemorrhage. They gave me an angiogram to see that they had all the mass removed. Uh-huh. And it gave me a strip. An angiogram can cause a stroke. Wow. And I did. I took a stroke on the table. And I have to say, it took me longer to recover from the stroke than from the brain hemorrhage. I I still have to exercise every day and do brain training every day to help me. But I do it and I've got my license, my driving license back after six years and I do my yoga and I I just keep going. I just don't give up. Well, I have to tell you that when I was reading your guys' website, uh, I had saw on there that, you know, that this health issue stuff had happened in 2012. And Ken, I want to ask you about the process of kind of getting back together and starting to perform again. I know you guys started to kind of perform more as of like 2016 and on because to me, and maybe you can tell me if this was why, But to me, it almost came off, at least in my heart, like you guys were doing this because it was kind of a get back on the horse kind of thing. I have to imagine that that helped Sally recover. Um, Well, actually, we got back together before Sally had her uh, brain hemorrhage. It was some years before that. Mm. Um, the, uh, The recovery after her brain hemorrhage was quite difficult because we had to she almost had to train herself again uh, to get back into singing properly and breathing properly and with two of the guys that we were playing with at that time in the band living in germany and us over here in the uk it was quite a problem trying to arrange rehearsals to get her breaking back together again Mm -hmm. um but uh she did it and we did it We, we had we brought the guys over for about two or three days and we rehearsed quite solidly, and she gradually picked up, the voice was better, and we were given our first opportunity uh, to perform together in front of an audience of about 12,500 people in Germany. Wow. And it was, it was extremely emotional. Um, the two presenters at the show, what, the girl was in tears, and the man was on his knees yeah. holding Sally's hand, saying how wonderful it was to see her back on the stage. And to me, 
uh, I just stood there and I didn't really know what to do. It was so emotional. It was yeah. extremely good to hear that people wanted to hear Sally's voice again, and they did. I'm I'm and so that was emotional. After her memory. Right. I, I I could not have been there. I'm emotional. so emotional. I got to ask you, Sally. Now I know at first you didn't know if you could ever do this again, and you didn't oh, really I think, think you I, could. I agree. I was terrified. Now, when they they finally got you to do this, and that happened, and you had all that outpouring of love, can you really describe what that was like for you? Can I describe it, my God? When I was waiting at the side of the stage to go on, I felt all the energy draining out of my body. I thought I was going to faint. I was just, I, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't get myself together, and. When I walked on the stage and saw these 12,500 people right up this mountainside, and uh, I think I went into automatic pilot. Yeah. And <laughs> the, uh, the audience sang with me, which was encouraging as well, because I, I've always loved to get the audience involved in my songs. Instead of just me singing, I want the audience to sing with me. And have fun. It's got to be fun. Right. It's, it's not a case of an artist up there singing and an audience listening. It should be like a party. Right. Everyone together. And at the end of it, when they all stood up, and at the end of the performance, when everyone stood up and they were clapping and shouting for more, I just, I burst into tears. And it was then the presenters they were emotional as well and everyone the boys all run forward and they all hugged me and oh, the, I, oh, I was in a mess <laughs> I, I guess one of the presenters <laughs> I, I guess one of the presenters was, was down I on was their knees emotionally right I guess one of the presenters Sorry? was down one of the presenters was down on their knees and kissed your hand is that right he, he kissed my hand and he said to me thank you for making this your first and you know, it, it, it's a real love affair, gig. right? It's a real love affair both ways because you got back together and, and started doing this again because of the love of the fans. And, and you know, even doing this interview, you're doing it for your fans because of all the fans is going to get to hear this because it's a two way street. And I think it's great that they showed you the love that they did, and you can give that love back by continuing on and fighting the fight and still being with us. And I thank you for that because God bless you, Sally. Well, the fans have been so loyal to us. If you have a chance, I can give you a very quick story about a gig we did in Belgium. Sure. And I had lost my voice. I had laryngitis. Mm -hmm. And the promoter said, we will put the CD on. You can lip sync. And I said, no. I just go on and very briefly just say, I'm sorry. And... We went on stage, and the boys all came on also, but they started to play. And I thought, what are they doing? And I tried to sing. I got the first line of the first song out, and then the voice went. And I was talk. I started to try and talk through the, the lyrics. And the audience all stood up, and they sang to me. And that was another fascinating thing. I wow. just, I just stood there, and then they were clapping for more at the end of the gig. They sang all the songs to me. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, swear, this is the truth. They was sang quite all the songs to me, and yeah, I was like Mickey Mouse. Was well, your mama gone? <laughs> <laughs> it was so. It, that was so emotional. And I came off the stage, and I was crying, and the audience were shouting for more. And I said to the promoter, he said, that was a fabulous gig. I said, but I can't sing. Well, he <laughs> said, that doesn't matter. We know you can sing. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think this is one of the things, one of the advantages that, that Sally has is that she can relate, and the audience can relate to her. They, they, they communicate with one another. It's very obvious that all the concerts we do, she needs to see the audience, she needs yeah. to talk to them. And once she's done that, it seems that no matter what she says or does or 
uh, you know, performs, they just completely respond in a very positive way. And sitting at the back on the drums, I get a very good view of everything that goes on. Mm -hmm. And it, it is quite remarkable, even from behind, to watch the way Sally communicates with the audience. And I think that's the big plus that she has, apart from her voice, and apart from the wonderful voices of the boys singing the harmonies in the background. I thought I would mention that. Um, <laughs> the, of course. <laughs> the, the audience and she make a, a real contact with one another, and I think that is a great, a great thing that Sally is able to do. Right. You, you know something? God, God works in mysterious ways, and you know I, I definitely believe in that. And it's a terrible thing what happened to you guys with what happened to Sally. But you guys are given a, a special gift if you can get any positivity out of this at all. Not a lot of bands realize how much they're loved. You guys have that. It is, it's a gift. It's unfortunate it had to be showed to you in that way, but not only Sally, but but you on the drums and, and everything, the boys that singing in the back, all of you guys really understand what people think of Middle of the Road, and it's because of this tragic thing that happened. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I think, uh, um, without wanting to sound immodest, but I mean, the we're not there to prove that we're a, a, a band that, you know, has a, a mark on society. We're just there to have fun. And I think that sometimes groups get so involved with what they're trying to say, you know, in a, in a, almost in a political sense, uh, they lose the value of what the audience actually wants at times. Yeah. It, it, there, are still, there are still, of course, people who enjoy that, and, and that's the people who are very strong fans of those bands, but right. it, it, the universal fans that we have, there's no politics. I mean, we, we've, we've actually played in, in East European countries when the wall was up and everything, and nobody had the slightest doubt that all we were there to do was to have fun. Right. right. Now, uh, Ken, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, how the band came to be and how you were involved with it, because... From what I read, from what I understand, uh, before Middle of the Road, you, you worked as a uh, film cameraman and a sound recordist, right? Wow. Yeah, well, uh, I started my, my working life as a, a, film, a, a film trainee. I was in a, a small film company in Glasgow, and we had a record company as well. And during the course of the years I was there, I learned a, a great deal about production and, and uh, recording, and, and just general entertainment business. We were, we were doing promotional films, we were doing entertainment films, uh, and we were meeting all sorts of personalities in those days performing for us. And that was my main income. But it wasn't a strong enough income, so I played in the band at night. I played mm -hmm. with uh, Ian and Eric McCready, who were uh, the two brothers in the band, and they invited me to, to play with them on a number of occasions. And I quite enjoyed it, and it gradually grew from that into a three-piece group, and we called ourselves Part Three. And after that, uh, Sally was involved. She became involved because we were playing with another band, whose lead singer, uh, female singer, uh, took ill. And we had to find somebody to replace her. Mm -hmm. And I was given the task of uh, going to the, the audition for Sally, and um, we listened to her, thought her voice was interesting, and she would just fit the bill with regard to the, the, the sort of gigs we were doing, which were mainly dance, supper dances. And she came along, she sang, and the other girl didn't come back because she didn't actually recover from her illness, unfortunately. Mm. But we decided that we would try, we, the, the, the three boys, in fact, were doing separate gigs as well, away from Sally, as part three. And she said, um, you know, uh, perhaps you might like to include me in that, <laughs> in, a, in a very strong fashion. In fact, she was quite angry at the fact that she wasn't involved. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, invited her to join us, and it became part four. And then briefly, without going into it for too much... Too wow. Long, so that was, that was 1960... That was 1960... Because we were uh, uh, very, uh, singing a lot of, Los, of Latin American mm -hmm. songs. Yeah, and uh, we dressed up with Latin American gear and carried on with the, the, the supper dances as was Caracas. And that was in 1967. After that, and, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say that well, was in 19. After that, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. After that, um, we were given the opportunity of appearing on television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one competition in Opportunity Knocks, which was a very sort of um, Britain's Got Talent type thing in those days. And we won that three times and ended up uh, on the final show uh, as as winners. So uh, that gave us an, an introduction into television. Absolutely. And we were really yeah. quite, quite lucky with that. Yeah. So I, I guess when Sally joined, now that was in 1967, and am I right, Sally, in knowing that you were about to move to America and then you changed your mind? Yeah, I was thinking about it to my friends, my, my school friends, many my friends for years. She, most of her family lived in America, uh-huh. uh, in Detroit, and she was going to move. No, she had moved out to join the rest of her family, and... I said I would like to come and try it for a year to see if it would work. Um, I was a hairdresser Mm. and I thought if I could get a job as a hairdresser and still maintain myself and the extra money I was getting from singing at night, that would help me if I didn't get a job immediately. And after I joined part three, part four, Part forever. <laughs> After I joined them, um, I liked to. I liked to singing, and I didn't go to America. I went to America to visit, right. but I, I didn't go to stay to work. I just stayed with the band, and we started working, doing gigs together, and I really did enjoy it. I loved it. I loved that part of the business better when we were. Amateurs, amateur musicians. When we turned professional, all the hype and the falseness attached to some of the profession, uh-huh. I didn't like. You know that that leads to like the. Sorry. I, I was just going to say that leads into a question. You were talking about show business hype, having to exploit you guys and everything. What did okay? You were a very attractive woman. You're still a very attractive woman. I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the ladies from Scotland, let me tell you, you're much. I can say that. It's much prettier than the ladies in the United States. And one of... Oh, that's not nice. Well, I know it's not nice, but I'm not nice at times. Uh, I, I know for a fact that the band had to sell a whole lot of record albums that had that shot of you looking behind you, and you're in the little short shorts, and you got this really nice butt shot. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but... How how did how what did you think about that? Because they're like taking a really nice shot of Sally's butt, and that's the <laughs> exploitation part. And you were talking about the hype and everything. How did you feel about that? Are you kind of shy and you didn't like that, or you just figured it was part of showbiz, or what? I was very shy actually, and when it came to taking that shot at that time, the fashion was hot pants. Right. Hot pants come into fashion. And I like I wore the hot pants, but I always wore long long boots with the hot pants. I, I like that, but I still like boots. Um, and when they were going to take that photograph, I was facing them when they took the photograph originally, and the photographer said, "Can you just turn and look over your shoulder at uh. me?" And I said. Okay, why? (laughs) 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 Oh, those sneaky guys. The truth was, I couldn't understand why they wanted to take a photograph of my bike. Well, I thought it was my bike, but it was my bum. (laughs) 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 I looked over my shoulder, and I think there is a slightly quizzical look on my face. A little bit, (laughs) yes. When I looked over my shoulder, and he just snapped it and... That was it. Uh, so I, you can imagine how I must have felt sitting at the back. I got that view all the time <laughs> for about 15 years. Well, well it, it was, it's an iconic album cover that I have blown up into a huge billboard size <laughs> that I have on my wall. Let me ask you, Ken, as, as a male member of, of the group, 
Because a lot of times, and, and it's kind of fair, but then sometimes not kind of fair, the, the beautiful girl lead singer a lot of times gets the attention, and, and a lot of times the drummer should get more attention, but don't because he's in the back. W was there any jealousy with the guys over Sally with all the, the male listeners in the middle of the road going, wow, look at her? <laughs> there probably was underlying somewhere, but there's one incident I can remember which really sort of says it all. We were walking through, uh, in Denmark, we were, we were walking down the road one day, uh -huh. and behind us there were a whole lot of youngsters, and they spotted us. And um, we were walking behind Sally, Sally was in front of us with, with the promoter, and um, we turned around and looked, and they were going, oh, it's middle of the road, and they came running down towards us, <laughs> and the three boys sort of opened their arms and smiled and everything, and they ran right past us and went to Sally. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> now, the answer to that was, oh, well. Oh, well. So <laughs> Sally, that had... I don't think there was any real, there was never any real jealousy. There was, I think in the, in the early days, um, a couple, well, we won't say who, wanted to do lead singing a lot more than others. Yeah. And um, I think there was some, some sort of um, ambition to do lead singing in, in the band to get some more attention but yeah. to be honest with you we knew what we were doing we knew what the audience wanted and the audience wanted Sally and they were happy to have three boys behind yeah. her and that, that really I think uh, sort of just says it all Did that make you feel bad Sally that they, they ran past them to go over to you? <laughs> um, I felt sorry for them <laughs> 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 no, I couldn't understand it. It's something I've never really been able to understand was the adulation that you get from fans. Fans came from all over Europe and there were three, not long after Chirpy became a hit, right. three young fans came from Holland. And I woke up one morning and I could hear these three voices singing chirpy and I looked out of my window and they were sitting on the fence on the opposite side of my street. I lived in the, in the countryside and there was a field opposite our house and they were sitting on the fence chanting chirpy cheep cheep. So I got up and I got dressed and I went out and I said, how did you know where I live? I just said it's easy. <laughs> So, I've had, that has happened quite a few times to me um, in my life. People coming from foreign countries, from Europe, from wherever, and just arriving on my doorstep. And I don't know how they, well, I suppose if they want to get your address, they will. Yes, they will. It, but I never gave my address to people. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask, uh, just because I'm a big fan of hers, a am I right in understanding that you guys, uh, Ken, did you guys do a project with Sophia Loren? Hey, <coughs> well, yes. yes, we did a recording with Sophia Loren. Um, it, it was quite uh, a unique thing for us. We, we, we never really found ourselves uh, uh, singing with other bands, you know, how groups tend to mix with one another and do <laughs> all sorts of things. We never, we never did that very much, but what seemed to happen to us is we ended up with um, actors and various other people be becoming involved with us. And I think yeah. in Italy at that time, because we were recording in RCA in Rome, which really was the center of the, the soundtrack business in Europe, um, Sophia Loren was there wanting to record uh, a vocal for her latest film at that time. I think it was um, The Priest's Wife. Right. Wow. Uh, I don't think the I don't think the film was a huge success, but uh, she she was a pop singer in the film, and they wanted her to actually record a song, which would um, give her that sort of aura. And um, we were doing a lot of soundtracks in Italy at that time, so they invited us down to Rome to sing with her, and uh, it was a very marvelous experience. She, we were only there for a day, but um, we met. Carlo Ponte and uh, Sophia, and we spent a whole day singing two songs for a single. Wow! And we thoroughly enjoyed it. It was and it was a, an experience which 
just came out of the blue. Nobody really told us this was going to happen. We just were invited by RCA to record this song. And it turned out to be quite successful. Sophia is such a legend. I mean, that had to be a real honor. My. Oh, wow. yes. Yes, wow. it was. I mean, to be honest with you, when we were told who we were going to be singing with, uh, a sharp intake of breath mm. happened. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and we went down with, but she was so lovely. I mean, she just was completely normal. And in fact, um, I had the opera often boast about this, so I'm going to do it again now, <laughs> but um, I, <coughs> she was in the studio recording her solo voice, uh -huh. and I had to go back in to, to get my wallet, I'd forgotten to take my wallet to go to the bar and have a drink while she was doing that, and I went back in again, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you at this time, but I forgot my money, and she said, um, oh, she says, I thought you were coming in to wish me good luck, oh. so I said, well, I will do, and I gave her a, a sharp kiss which she then reciprocated mm. and said, that's better, I feel much more relaxed now. And I went out quickly and I thought, should I go in again? Should I go in again? <laughs> so she, she, was no, I, I mean, she, she was a lovely, natural person and we really got on very well for the short period of time we were there. Nice. She, she was used to people like Peter Sellers falling in love with her when he, he did some <laughs> songs with her, so she was probably hoping you would give her flowers or something. I don't, I don't know. Well, yes, of course, yes. Uh, I mean, I know, I know I can put myself in the same range as Peter Sellers now, but that's another matter. <laughs> well, I can tell you something about the flowers. When we were leaving the studio to walk, we were coming down the stairs, and we were each, Sophia and I were each given a rose, and because one rose in Italy has more meaning than a big bunch of roses. Mm. And we had one rose each and we were walking down the stairs and she turned to me and she said, smile dear, the paparazzi are watching. Mm -hmm. If you don't smile, they'll think we've had a bad day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they so think there'd be a the few. the paparazzi were all at the bottom of the stairs. I must say, Sally, if you were in one corner and Sophia was in the other corner, I wouldn't know which corner to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> it, it, it would be a, it would be a draw. I guess <laughs> if that wasn't an honor enough, you guys were actually in a commercial that was shown in the theater for a Fiat, which is a, a vehicle mini hatchback. Uh, maybe one of the two of you, maybe Ken, you can start, and Sally can fill in about uh, the, the commercial you did for the Fiat. We yes, had to yeah. go to Morocco mm. to film most of it, and um, it was it was incredible. They gave us these special costumes to wear, and the one I had on, I could hardly lift it because it was all gold thread. Oh, and it, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I don't know if you've seen the picture of the um, the there was a picture on the front of a CD and we were in the desert and the guide that we had, Lotifi, Lotifi, when we were having a break, mm -hmm. um, he said something to me, we were sitting talking and I said I was terrified of snakes uh -oh. and I said but we're okay in the sand because, because there's no snakes in the sand and he said on the contrary, the most deadly ones are just under the sand, <sighs> and that was it. I didn't want well, to I, go back I, I must there say, I was, I was quite shocked at the fact that they wanted us to roll around in the sand, so <laughs> I, I, it seemed to me to be a method of getting rid of us somehow, I don't know. So, well, please tell me <laughs> they, please tell me they at least gave you a car, one of the Fiats or something for doing that. <laughs> Well, we, we didn't get a car, um, unfortunately, but um, we did, we did um, I remember one reason, we went to, to see the film Love Story in Rome, in the American cinema in Rome. Right. And we, we, the film that came on before it was this fear film. And we all sat there in a row, watching the film, and uh, as soon as it finished, they brought the lights up again, just to, as an interval before the main feature. Uh-huh. And you should have seen that we looked exactly the same as we were on the film, because the four of us were, were sitting together, uh -huh. and we felt really quite conspicuous, because people were looking around <laughs> with expressions on their faces of, uh, is that you? <laughs> you know the sort of thing? 
<laughs> and we were, well, it was actually quite embarrassing because the film actually was very confusing. I didn't understand it at all. I mean, being a, having worked in the film business for some time, um, the script was all over the place. Are you talking and about the commercial or love story? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you mean... <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is that we, we left the cinema in a Vauxhall Cresta car. Ah. So I don't think Fiat would have been too happy about that. Right, right. Now, let me ask you, because, of course, everybody talks about Chirpy uh, when they're talking about your band, but let me ask you, each of you, uh, Ken, you can go first, and Sally, you can follow, what is your favorite song of Middle of the Road, either personal favorite or favorite to perform, because, of course, everybody knows and loves Chirpy. I know that Terry and I, both of us, we really love Soli Soli. And Tweedledee Tweedledum. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean... If you guys had to pick one, I know it's like picking your favorite child. What would be your number one favorite of your guys' songs, and why? I think, <clears throat> from my point of view, my favorite song is Sacramento. Mm -hmm. mm. Because it, it's quite a, a demanding one to play to. And it, it's got lots of enthusiasm, lots of aggression, and it's a, re a really good song. And to me, that, that was my favorite one. I thought I, I really enjoyed playing that one more than any of the others. Right. What about you, Sally? Well, I call Sacramento Sack the Drummer. <laughs> 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 hey, you, you guys. She <laughs> I, I don't really mean that. No, my favorite is actually Soli Soli. Ah. Uh. Um, I had a flat in Madrid and. Armando Trotten, no, not Armando, Jacket. Uh-huh. Who wrote it Solly, Solly, Ken? Um, it was, um, his name's just gone from me at the moment. I just went, just gone from me. Someone there, there. I can't remember his name. <laughs> um, I know. Has anyone got the, the record there? No. Uh, no, hold on. Anyway, him. the guy who wrote Solly, Solly, he had a flat above me. Yeah, it had a big fella out in the countryside. And Fernando Arbeck. Yes. Fernando Arbeck. There you That's go. right. And he had a flat above me in Madrid. And one day he came down to me and he said he had written other songs for us. And he came downstairs to me and he said, I've written this new song, Sally, what do you think? And it was solely, solely. And I just, I, I loved the melody and I loved the way it flowed. Yeah. Everything. But his lyrics were all wrong for the song. So I changed quite a lot of the, the lyrics to make it a wee bit more good English, could mm -hmm. I say? For sure, um, yeah. And that was it. But then after I was married and had a child, my son, I lost my son when yeah. he was 20. Mm -hmm. um, my only child... He loved Soli Soli, oh. and he actually did some work. He came on the stage with us sometimes and playing his guitar, and I think that's probably why I love Soli Soli so much. That's a good it's reason. Because of his enthusiasm for it. Yeah. He absolutely adored it. Wow. He did, and he always said to me, be proud, Mum. That's that, that that's that, that's a wonderful song, wonderful story, and, and a wonderful song. You know, I've got to ask you. We we have our our feuds here in the United States, and it's usually the the Hatfields and the McCoys. But I guess Tweedledee Tweedledum is about a feud between Scottish clans. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't actually. But that's <laughs> I used to say that. I used to say, but I, I don't really know what it's about. Do you know. <laughs> So it is about it's about the Scottish clans, but the Tweedledee Tweedledum bit is the sound of the bagpipes. Ah, that's ah. right, right. It is about Scottish clans. I remember that. You have to ignore me, guys. I have lost quite a lot of memories since I had the brain hemorrhage. No, you're so doing this just interview fine. Interview today is good for me. It's opening up more doors. I'll tell you, Sally. You remember more than I do. 
and and I'm only 38 <laughs> years old, that. so you're doing fine. <laughs> I'll be like, what did I have for breakfast? Thank I you. don't remember. <laughs> no, no, you know, we we <laughs> knew we knew about your health problem, and you're you're far exceeding our expectations. You're you're delightful, and and you remember quite a bit. And like I said, the the remembering thing has not as much to do with health as it does to age because us old farts <laughs> us old farts just forget everything old, yeah, old, yeah yeah that, that's the way it is well, that's why i'm finding it doubly difficult because i'm getting older yeah and but recently lots of little things have been happening um in my home i'm trying to catch up on many years of not been able to do anything mm -hmm. and I'm trying to renovate my house and I'm finding things that are opening up new doors and new memories not new memories, memories that I had lost mm -hmm. but they're all coming back again right. and it's fantastic and that'll happen it's just yeah. that I'm loving it Absolutely. I'm tired of doing it but I'm loving yeah. it you know I've got to ask uh, we interviewed somebody from another Scottish super group and I guess he hated it, and he escaped. You guys had a member join Middle of the Road from the Bay City Rollers. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. We had um, one of the guys from Middle of the Road, from the Bay City Rollers. We took him on. It was way back in the very beginning because we wanted an extra guitarist to do solo work with us, to do solo guitar work with us. Yeah, Neil Henderson. And we stole Neil from the original Bay City Rollers, yeah. Now, Ken was like, that's okay as long as I don't have to wear the tartan. Right? Sorry? I said Ken was like, that's fine as long as we don't have to wear the tartans. <laughs> yes, that's right. It was, uh, it, I mean, okay, we didn't wear any tartan, but we, it, on some of our photographs, we wore, the, we wore the most outrageous stuff. Yeah. Which... Actually, we never, we never really got into that at all. I thought you can see from the photographs that really we prefer to be just the normal sort of 60s style mm -hmm. rather than the 70s style that was going on at that time. But, I mean, flares, I used to trip over them. They used to get caught in my drum pedal. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> my. <laughs> I wore tartan. I wore a tartan kilt, a small, a short, a mini kilt. Oh, but that was all right. You're allowed to do that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I saw on on the video for one of the videos for Chirpy Chirp uh, Sally, your your pant legs. You talk about flared. I mean, they were like two feet out there. I mean, I don't know how you kept from falling over those things. That's right. I mean, I loved the flares. I have to say, I really did love them. And these flares, I got made in Singapore. Um, I got quite a few bits and pieces made when we were working in Singapore. Uh -huh. um, I, I was fascinated. The tailor would come to your hotel room, measure you, check what you wanted made, and bring it back the next morning. Mm. And it fitted perfectly. It, I, I, exactly. Perfectly. It was, it was incredible. Amazing. So I would buy the, the, the silk, the Thai silk, and then... I had a, a couple of outfits made over in Singapore, which was fantastic. But yeah, I, I do love the, I did love the big flares yeah. because I felt the big flares made me look a bit taller. <laughs> you know, as but far as, see, um, go ahead. Well, you see, I could wear platform shoes underneath them. Ah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and as far as the outfits for the guys, you guys look great. You look very distinguished. I loved your outfits. It, it was, you know, I, I was glad you didn't I, dress like the Bay City well, Rollers. Well, I was going to say, at least you guys weren't wearing as as crazy of outfits as like Abba did not too long later. <laughs> I mean, they looked like they were from another yeah. planet. Yeah, I know, but there, there are one or two, one or two items that we wore which. To me, looked like from another planet as well. And which, <laughs> there was one set actually, which which were uh, they seemed to have sort of tin foil all around them, mm. and they, they they were lined with this sort of tin foil stuff. So you can imagine what it was like after performing for about an hour and ten minutes, yeah. stepping yeah. on nothing and else. I, I was it was awful. I, I was trying to get to see the the guy we had on the Bay City Rollers was not your guy. It was Les McKeon. 
And I kept trying yes. to get him to explain what a tartan was because I didn't really understand. And I think he got frustrated. Maybe he thought I was stupid or something. It's plaid. It's, it, it, it's plaid. I'm like, okay, it's plaid. I understood that. I didn't know what a tartan was because the, the terminology is different than the way we talk here. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've got to ask you, you guys... We're all good-looking ones. My my daughter thinks that Ken, yes. that you were the sexy one of the group. But was there what was there was there any romance between Sally or any of the guys? I know Sally got married to a newspaper journalist later, but before she got married, was there any romance or dating between Sally or any of you guys? No, we're, we're, we're all in love with one another. Yeah, that's a good answer. We were all friends. We were all very good <laughs> was, friends. Yeah, it was good friends, friends and I think together. that's why it worked so well. It was, it was um, in fact, I, I often r- refer to the band, certainly in the early days, as being a family. Yeah. Right. I mean, we did work well together. The voices worked well together. We had all much, we, we, we all thought the same way to a great extent, and that's why it worked so well. Um, it was just unfortunate that certain things happened that caused us to break up. Yeah. But on the other hand, there were things that we did do. I mean, there are lots of recordings out there um, which we did do by ourselves. We wrote the songs, we produced the material, etc. And not many people hear it. And it's not the same as the happy songs that we did before. It's more the songs that we actually wanted to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure that they would be that commercial, but they certainly showed the way the band worked together and, and mm-hmm. it, it worked quite well. Is, is there, is all the... I think some of these, sorry, I think some of these songs that Ken's talking about gave us a chance to show our vocal abilities. Yes. 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 I mean, they were, they were more demanding in the sense that they were, uh, they were more like pop songs. I mean, I, I can't imagine middle of the road songs being all pop. Yeah. They, they were fun songs and, and they were cute. you could sing along with them. The songs we recorded later were not so much songs you could sing along with, but they did have a storyline to them and, and we sang them with, with quite a bit of emotion and I still listen to these songs now and say, and enjoy them. You know, I enjoy the original songs, yeah. but I like the new songs as well and we'd love to get those out. Uh, we've been trying, well they actually are out on, in certain countries in the world, but um, not all around the world. And uh, we've been trying to get Sony to to uh, get them released. But um, you know, they're not. It's a different generation now. I don't think they would release them. Well, I don't know. We did quite a lot of soundtracks for films in Italy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what that I was saying. Yeah, I, I think very early days. Yeah. I, I think now would be a good time uh, that we get to hear. You know. Uh, Euro pop groups like yourselves, because there's a whole lot of attention. I mentioned this in the beginning uh, of uh, ABBA, and, and they got so doggone big that, that I think now would be a really good time to release some of that middle of the road stuff. You think so? I think so, and, yeah. and, and I would love to do it. But unfortunately, in fact, to be honest with you, I've been trying to find out how we could do it ourselves. Right. But uh, <clears throat> there seems to be some difficulty with contracts and things that nobody seems to can be able to find the original contract for these songs and i've spent you know you can spend hours trying to talk to large organizations like like sony and mm-hmm. they really you know they don't they, i've spoken to italy and they've said oh we'll look into it and you never hear back yeah right. yeah so it, as far as to do. as far as the band is concerned now thank god you two are with us is there any other members of middle of the road that, that has left us that has passed away or is everybody still around one one member, Eric uh, McCready, the, the bass guitarist, sadly died uh-huh. about even nine years ago. Oh, okay. um, and but we we weren't together at that time. Right. We, were, we were all separate at that time. But yeah. it, it was quite sad. He died on his own, and um, you know we we do miss him in that respect. Yeah. Well, I I know you and Sally uh, uh, do things, and I I seen you on that show uh, singing Sacramental. And, and so forth. Uh, are, if you guys went back to touring, or, or maybe you are, I don't even know what if you are touring or not, would it be you and Sally, or would you get back together with the rest of the guys, or have you guys gotten back together? Well, 
We have, in the sense that Sally and I have got back together. There has been a little discourse, a little disagreement in the band. Yeah. Ian does go around, Ian McCready has his son and uh, another singer going around as middle of the road mm -hmm. in Europe, uh, and they're singing all the songs quite differently, um, and they tour, but of course not just now, and we've right. been touring as middle of the road featuring Sally Carr. Yeah which is really the band that people are wanting, you know, to, to hear. Absolutely. But um, in that respect, it, it's the old story of, you know, a split in the band, two different bands going, and nobody knows who's who. But there's one particular person who does, I think, personify in the middle of the road, and that's Sally. And you know something? Oh. I don't know if you know this, Sally. I'm going to doggone tell you, your, your illness has affected nothing with your voice. You sound the same. You thank still you. got it. it. You got the voice of an angel, and you got something that God gave you, and, and thank God you're still able to share it with the world, you know? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, really the, you the, sac that. the sacramental thing I wanted to ask before we go, that that was some kind of a satellite hookup thing, wasn't it? What was that about? Sorry, say that again? Uh, the satellite the, hookup, was that with uh, Sacramento? Yeah. Yes, it was CBS. Yes, that was, that was out of the blue as well. It was really quite nice. Wow. Um, Sacramento, of course, uh, being the, the city of trees right. is, is, the, is what they say they are. And um, they, say they, they wanted to know a bit more about the song and why we had sung it. And Sally, you, you, we went down to... You tell the story. We went down to... Well, first of all, we went down to London and we did a hookup with Good Morning Sacramento, mm. which is a, a news program in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we did the hookup with them live uh, from a studio in London. And as the. It was fascinating to watch this, to, the, to see, we actually saw the hookup with the presenters. Um, in the studio presenting this news program and we did the hook up with them and they got us to sing a little bit of Sacramento live on the tel on the radio uh, sorry on the the link uh -huh. and then from that came the documentary about Sacramento wanting to become the city of trees they wanted to plant more and more trees for the environment and we did another little documentary which Ken filmed and we sent it to them. They wanted us to go to the premiere of the film but it wasn't possible at the time and so we sent them this little documentary, that this little film that Ken had wow. shot and they played that at the premiere of the film. Now, when we say yeah, sac... It was, it, it, Go ahead. So it was, a, it was the, 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 um, these were two separate incidents, actually. We had the, the satellite interview was early on, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then later on we were contacted by a production company from Sacramento who wanted to use the recordings, and we, we couldn't give them permission for the original recording of Sacramento right. because that was with Sony, right. uh, but we gave them permission to use the re-recordings that we had done and they use it in a, in a documentary that they were making and um, uh, it, it seemed to go extremely well now when we talk, it, talk about favorite song. right when we talk about Sacramento are we talking about Sacramento California yes you know that's the, that's a real honor I mean we didn't even want anybody from the we could have got somebody from the United States forget it Let, let's get middle of the road <laughs> from from Scotland <laughs> Because guess and, what? Um, yeah, I think it's not so much it's not so much a credit to Middle of the Road as a credit to the song, which yeah. I think um, they were they were very keen on. Not very many people sang songs about Sacramento. In fact, I think I got I saw something on the internet that said, "Have you ever been to Sacramento? You couldn't <laughs> sing about it. It's a dreadful place." But it's not true, of course. It's a beautiful city. I because I, you know us Americans, we get our underwear up our butts. If they have a disabled person in a movie, if they don't have a disabled actor playing it, 
they get ticked off and i can imagine there were some people it's like oh great you got people from scotland singing about <laughs> california you know sacramento yes yeah no that was one of the one of the, the reasons why we were on that satellite show was because they couldn't understand why we were singing about sacramento and the interviews us asking us what the origins of the song were mm -hmm. and um it was really just uh, the same guy that wrote chirpy cheap cheap uh -huh. had been visiting Mexico and went through Sacramento on a number of occasions because he, he often visited Mexico and um, loved the city and he just wrote something about it and that was it. Wow. Yeah. So did I hear you say, have you guys been to Sacramento? No. No, we, we have We've never been to Sacramento. Well, you guys, if... if we, were invited, we were invited to go for the premiere of the documentary that was made, but it was impossible for us to go across. Yeah. yeah. And um, we were actually doing a gig in... in uh, Belgium at the time. Well, let, let me so tell you. We recorded a little, a little message here in in Myanmar Bun right. with all the trees round about us, and that really suited them. They, they quite liked that, so we just wished them all the from Scotland. Well, let me tell you, it, you know, Sacramento, it's it's no Scotland, <laughs> you know. So just no. Yeah, you're you're in a prettier place. And, and so uh, there was there was a whole lot of cover songs of, of Chirpy Chirpy. What was the worst one, and what was the best one, in you guys' opinion? Um, the, I think the only one that we, we knew about was uh, Mac and Katie Kasum, who got got it into the charts in the States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, Kyla Minogue has covered it. Yeah. Yeah, but, oh yes, and she did that on an album recently. Yes, that's right. Wow. I've never heard that one. Yeah. I've but, heard I mean, it. It, it, it. Mac and Katie Kasum did a very much more serious version. Yeah. Um, it was more... It, you know, it has a sort of soul feel to it. Uh, Kylie Minogue is very popular it was with the station. It also covered in Chinese. Wow! Yeah. It was also covered in Chinese. Who did that? A Chinese girl. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. So, uh, what what did you think of Kylie Minogue, uh, Sally? Do you like her version? I like Kelly Minogue. I think she, I love Kelly Minogue. I yeah. think she's got a lovely voice, and yeah. I, I, I love the, the songs that she does. That's I have to be truthful and say it wasn't chirpy. Right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It didn't there suit you her go. voice. I didn't think. There you go. It didn't suit her voice, and that's maybe wrong of me to say that, but I just didn't think it suited her voice. Yeah. It wasn't happy enough. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, nobody does happy like middle of the road. I'm That's sorry. Right. I could be in the worst mood. And, you know, Terry and I are father and daughter. And I'll be in the worst mood. And he'll play that song. And I'm just like, okay, I'm fine now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Well, Here. I want to thank both of you so much for spending some time with us, getting up early over there to do this interview. It has been such an honor for us. I know it is going to be such an honor and privilege for your fans to get to listen to this candid conversation. And I am just so happy uh, that you guys are together. You're still doing music. Please, please, please stay safe during this crazy COVID stuff. And then afterwards, yeah. let's get all that music out there. Yeah. Well, we're the ones who are honored to have yes, you inviting us to speak with you. We're the ones who are honored. And it's we're talking to you, and it, it's so nice to know that, you know, thousands of miles away, we can still communicate properly, yes. musically and by telephone. Yeah, yes. see, that's the thing. You guys have a whole different lingo. I mean, we, we both speak English. But you have different terminology. But the the thing that we share is is music, you know, Absolutely. and that's what makes yes. everybody get together. Very true. Yeah. Absolutely. Long may that be the case. Yes. Well, again, and music is good for the soul. It is. It is, absolutely. Again, thank you both so much. I will let you guys go, but have a great rest of your day. And, uh, Ken, you have my, my email and all that stuff. Keep in touch. Anytime that you guys are able to get some new releases out there, let me know. We are more than happy to promote the crap out of it. And, and since we have such a great time difference, we'll make this interview available for you to play on demand for your Facebook page so all your European fans can hear this and not have to be up at 3 in the morning. <laughs> 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 well, it's been really great talking to you. You've been a marvelous pair. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so it's much. Been fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting us to join you. Absolutely. God bless you both, and God bless you, Sally, and stay well, please, because you're doing great. And the same to you guys. You stay well and stay safe. <laughs>
Thank yeah. you. We will. All the best. All, All the, the best. best. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.